we are going to be walking through how you can add Swagger Open API documentation to your existing Flask app. And this is really important if you are working in a production environment where you want to have great documentation for your service that other people can quickly contribute to what you're doing and we will get started. So um, before we get too deep into this, I have a very, very basic Flask app. It's got a home route and it's also got uh, an API endpoint here where people can post new users to it. Um, so I'm just going to spin this guy up right now and I'm going to open up a uh, web page and we're just going to go to localhost uh, and I have this running on port 80 so I don't need the any other ports besides that because that's a default um, but that is our home route and then I also have postman up and running here and so if I wanted to uh, you know put in someone into my little flask app just we have running here I'll say you know we've got a person named uh, John and they're 20 or Adam, whoever, uh, and you can see it's going through as expected. So this is our service. And so now at this point, if you hadn't done any documentation is where you would look into how to create that stuff with Swagger, because Swagger gives you a very elegant kind of front end, it's interactive. Um, and so basically what we're gonna be doing is just following the uh, guide that they have. And I will put a link to this in the description, but um, it's very, very straightforward to get this stuff. Um, you go to uh, pyp.org, or however you pronounce it, and um, there's this web page. Whatever the most recent version is, go with it. Uh, they frequently update this thing. But um, basically, we're just going to run this command. So I'm going to go into PyCharm. I'm going to go to the terminal, and I'm just going to run that. And, you know, because I'm on a Mac, uh, it wants me to run pip3 instead. Um, so I'm just going to run pip3. So you can see it just runs through that. So basically what we just did in our project is we installed the uh, package that is called Flask Swagger UI. So this makes it a lot easier to get started here. Um, and then they give you a little usage right here that makes life super simple. So I'm gonna make this half screen, make this the other half, and it's basically just copy pasting stuff here. So we're going to be importing uh, the get Swagger UI blueprint module. And after we've uh, initiated our class, our app object. Um, we're just going to be pasting in this stuff here. And um, let me just paste this in and I'll talk about it real quick. And I'll turn on the soft wrap. And I'll make sure that's big enough. So um, basically right now, what uh, they're doing in their little example is they're giving you this link to a swagger.json file. And this is something that anyone can access uh, if you paste it in to like another window um, you can see uh, it's literally just uh, JSON and so you know this is a very generic template has absolutely nothing to do with the sample uh, service that we have here and so the art of writing API documentation is going to be modifying this JSON uh, appropriately such that you can um, have it correspond to what is on your website. Uh, so unfortunately, uh, at least the way this works, doing this kind of after the fact, um, you do have to go through the pain and suffering of, of rewriting this whole uh, JSON document or XML uh, file. And I'll show you guys an editor that they provide that make that a little bit easier. Um, but that's all this thing is. This is where all the documentation lives in a JSON format. And basically the only thing that Swagger does is it turns this JSON or YAML file or XML uh, into a interactive front end in your site. Uh, and you are telling it specifically that at the endpoint API forward slash docs is where it's going to live. Um, so I'm going to go back to here and um, we're just going to scroll back over. Um, and uh, we're going to paste in this stuff. Just like that. And I will put this in GitHub so you guys can uh, continue to uh, modify this as needed. And so now that I've pasted all this stuff in, I'm going to stop that. We'll make this full screen. Um, and we're going to now run this guy. So we're seeing it's now running again on port 80. So I'm gonna open up a new window and we're gonna to go to localhost, returns what we expect on our home route. And now if we go to API slash docs, we can see that we now have uh, basically the uh, documentation, the interactive documentation rendered for us by Swagger. Um, and so this is where you can start to uh, 
you know, it, obviously you'd have unique values here, but you can see their, their little dummy stuff where people can play around with these and they have even authorization enabled here where you have to authenticate first before you're allowed to make changes and things. But um, this is how you get the route and the uh, open API uh, spec added into your site. The painful part, uh, if you know, you're know you adding this to a big complicated Flask app uh, with you know several endpoints and, and different methods uh, is gonna be basically to edit it. So um, basically what I would recommend doing is looking up Swagger JSON editor. And um, they do provide a Swagger editor here and you can kind of see how you can go in here and uh, basically just put in um, what you want uh, so, you know, it's a live editor, so you can just play around with this stuff, but make it the way that corresponds to your site. And then you've basically condensed all of the API documentation into this single, uh, XML or, or JSON document. One thing I want to call out here is that in this swagger editor, this is entirely in XML right now. So, uh, before you can take this and put this into your flask app, what you need to do is you need to go to file and then convert and save as JSON. And then this will give you the JSON version of uh, all this stuff. Um, might need to open up in uh, Firefox, something. it doesn't really matter, but basically I wanna copy this thing. Um, and then if we go back into PyCharm, uh, the way people typically do this is um, you'll make like a static directory inside of your app. So we'll call it static. And inside of static, you create a file and you call it uh, swagger.json. And inside of this guy is where you would actually have, um, you know, the, the JSON corresponding to your documentation. So all this stuff lives in swagger.json. And then inside of main.py, uh, when we're registering this swagger UI blueprint, instead of referencing this uh, API URL, what we do instead is we uh, reach into our static directory and specifically we're looking for that swagger.json document so I'm just editing that and then I'm going to stop my web app and restart it and we'll see if that worked so now I'm just going to go back to here opening up a new page localhost API docs um, and I might need to change how I've defined my path, but uh, basically um, that is how this thing works. I might need to do like forward slash, let's try that. Yeah, so that's uh, what fixed it. But you can see now that uh, I've successfully created my own customized uh, swagger.json file and I've put it locally inside of the project directory. So now when my web service is running, it's looking to this local thing instead of that you know endpoint on the web. And so people can now come in here and you can edit swagger.json in your project directory to your heart's content. And um, that's how it works. So uh, that is how you add in this to your Flask app. I hope this is helpful stuff. Definitely took me a little bit to figure it out, but it is valuable and it help will help other people uh, make your services a lot more user friendly. So um, thank you all for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and be well.